Please allow me to welcome y'all to the Society of Georgia Archivists 52nd Annual Meeting. For a second year, we are hosting the annual meeting virtually. I'm Holly Croft, Digital Archivist at Georgia College in Mill Milledgeville, and I am happy to see so many folks from around the state here now together, albeit not tangibly. Like many of you, I look forward to the day we can be together in person again. I know this is not the meeting we originally had hoped for, but I know that it is going to be a great experience nonetheless. Thank you all for your continued support of SGA and the archives profession. I mentioned previously that I am in Milledgeville and most of us here are somewhere within the current boundaries that make up the state of Georgia. It is important that we acknowledge that Georgia is the homeland of 11 Native American tribes prior to white colonization of the state. The Westo, Timucua, Appalachie, Gual, Yamasee, and Cherokee, four members of the Creek Nation, Muscogee, Hichiti, Miccosukee, and Oconee, and one tribe lumped in for federal recognition, but that is historically not part of the Creek Nation, the Yuchi. These people were made promises and treaties still unrealized today, coerced into signing away rights and land and forcibly removed from their lands. While these removals began shortly after white settlers arrived in 1733, the gold rush of 1829 prompted a particularly dark time in United States history the Indian Removal Act of 1830 and the events that it set in place, where Native Americans, most of them Cherokee or members of the Creek Nation, were forcibly marched out of Georgia between 1836 and 1839, leaving only a small number of Native Americans anywhere east of the Mississippi River. Consequently, today, there are no federally recognized tribal nations in the state of Georgia. Many of the descendants of the Georgia tribes are now located in Oklahoma. I challenge each of us to learn more about these people and their contributions to this place, to consider our institution's relationships to past and current mistreatment or apathy in regards to Native American lives and culture, and to support organizations that are working towards restorative actions, some of which I have listed on a slide. And I'm going to share it for just a moment here. Holly, you're muted. I commend you and want to know your, your secrets. Oops. For me, at least, I'm approaching the final months of 2021 with a healthy dose of trepidation. Please, please, please don't let there be another shoe to drop, but just in case there is, I'm ready for you. In all seriousness, virtual learning, which we struggled to implement before the pandemic, feels very ordinary now. The novelty may have worn off, but the necessity surely hasn't. If it feels as though everything is occurring like clockwork during this meeting, it's because Fiji Hall, Autumn Johnson, Jennifer Wyatt, and Nancy Davis Bray are working harder than hamsters on a wheel to make it seem easy. Thank y'all each so much. Further, much like last year, the program committee has taken great care to ensure that we have time to learn and reflect without getting overwhelmed in this virtual environment. Spreading the content out over multiple days, reducing the length of time we all need to be plugged in and looking at a screen, and scheduling frequent breaks. Of course, you still know your own limits better than anyone else, so please ensure that you're well rested, well watered, well fed, well stretched and comfortable, all of which makes for a better learning environment. As you participate over the next three days, you might decide to share nuggets of information on social media. We encourage this and ask that you use hashtag SGA2021 to tag your posts.
This year's annual meeting theme, Archives Endure, Resilience, Innovation, and Adaptation in Archival Work, speaks to this time and place, 19 months into the COVID pandemic. The world is not the same, and the hope that normalcy is right around the corner has dissipated. We cannot command pre-pandemic times back into existence, and with that truth comes an understanding that how we work cannot go back to pre-pandemic times either. While we were all working from home last year, it became apparent that not all archival work needed to be done in person. Some things could be done quite well from a distance. And now some of us are adapting those modifications into their everyday workspaces, even as we have all returned to work in person. Other parts of our job, didn't translate into the virtual sphere well, and we've lived to tell those tales too. Finally, some of us experienced upheaval during the pandemic in our workspaces. While not common in Georgia, some of our colleagues experienced furloughs and job losses. COVID has not been kind to the worker. If there is a positive coming out of 2021, it is that workers finally seem to be in a fighting mood. Even here in Georgia, we're seeing workers at the John Deere plant in McDonough this week holding signs in support of the strike. Now, I realize that the demographics of the state have changed and are continuing to change, but if you'd told me 10 years ago that I'd see protest signs in support of a strike in McDonough, I'd have told you that you were in an alternate reality. Nonetheless, McDonough. Many of us work for the University System of Georgia and we have witnessed some incredibly anti-labor decisions coming out of the system office in the past few months. I want to acknowledge the SGA members who have been part of demonstrations against these policies, those who have contacted their district's regent to make their opinions known, and those who have publicly sounded the alarm in a variety of ways. I see you, I commend you, and I stand with you. As archivists, we know that the lessons from history demonstrate that strength in hostile environments, even those that seem like change is impossible, has lain in collective actions well before more robust protections are ever an option. Speaking of workplace issues, well, kinda, anyway, you may have seen an email come in last night from past president Courtney Chartier. SAA president, yes, but she was ours first. Anyway, that email is asking that you participate in A Census 2, and I want to second that right now. A Census told us so much about the real life experiences of archivists and archives adjacent folks, and it was good, solid data that flagged issues we may have only noticed anecdotally before it came out. But y'all, that data is now old. It's well past time to update it, but we need each of you to fill out the survey in order to give us the most accurate representation of the archival field today. Finally, thank you to the many, many of you who have been so supportive of the safety measures SGA is abiding by. Too often, we are not experiencing leadership choices that are made in the interest of people's safety and health. And I wanna commend our board members for choosing to keep those two things at the forefront of decision-making this year. Because we're seeing it so irregularly these days, I must emphasize that this is real leadership, y'all. Taking a position of leadership means doing the very best you can for the collective, whether or not it's popular or the most fun. And I know we have done that. I am so proud of this board. And I again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. But I also must note that this organization's membership makes leading easy because we all care for each other. All of you make me proud of this organization. Now I get to introduce someone whose work has helped shape me into the archivist I am today. Y'all, I am four week old puppy level excited that Dr. Michelle Caswell is our keynote speaker. Dr. Caswell is the chair of the Department of Information Studies and an associate professor of archival studies at the University of California, Los Angeles. Dr. Caswell directs a team of students at UCLA's Community Archives Lab, which explores the ways that independent identity-based memory organizations document, shape, and provide access to the histories of minoritized communities with a particular emphasis on understanding their effective political and artistic impact. 
In 2008, together with Samit Malik, Dr. Caswell co-founded the South Asian American Digital Archive, an online repository that documents and provides access to the stories of South Asian Americans. She is the author of the books, Urgent Archives, Enacting Liberatory Memory Work and Archiving the Unspeakable, Silence, Memory, and the Photographic Record in Cambodia, as well as more than 40 peer-reviewed articles in critical archival studies. I want to thank